Welcome to TwoQuestions.tv. Our favorite Welshman, Kyle Davis, is back, and we're talking about healing the body through healing the self. Welcome to TwoQuestions.tv. I'm Susan Barancini Mo. Joining me again today is our favorite Welshman, Kyle Davis, a coach, author, and trainer. He teaches people how to optimize their well-being, attain clarity of mind, and perform more effectively at work, home, and in life. He's also the author of this book, The Intelligent Body, Reversing Chronic Fatigue and Pain from the Inside Out. Hi, Kyle. Welcome back to the show. Thank you for having me back. I'm amazed <laughs> you had me back after, after my, my bad behavior last time. What are you talking about? You were great. I was great. Yeah. <laughs> well, last time on the show, we spent most of our time talking about stress and the impact that it has on the body. And I realize this is a massive topic and your book is very rich with a lot of wisdom. And I wanted to have you come back because we just didn't have time in the first interview to capture it all. And I may ask you back again if you'll come back because there was so, there's just so much in here. And there it's was just, a lot in there because I think, yeah, because people are at different levels and people are at different yes. stages. And I think that, that, there's not a one size fits all. So my right. work is a, is a, is a framework really. And, you know, I can't, I can't say to people, right, well, here's the, the five steps you follow. And even though that is what everybody wants, people want that, those five steps. I, I'm not sure that we can really do that any, anymore. Anyway, right. sorry, you were going to ask yeah. me a question. Oh, well, okay. All right. So, <laughs> Well, in the book, you talk about how symptoms are solutions, and I think that's perhaps an interesting place to start today. So could you explain that concept a little bit? I can. Um, so I, I think- <laughs> What if you said no? No, oh, absolutely <laughs> no. not. Sorry. No, don't read the book. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I think people intuitively know this. Um, because I think that there is, you know, if you're walking down the road, and a stone pops in your shoe, you feel a sharp pain in your foot, and you know that, oh, look, that's, that pain is there to tell me something, I've got to get that stone out of my shoe. Or if I'm hungry, or if I'm thirsty, we know because there's a feedback mechanism, there's something I feel inside. So with my work in energy flow coaching, we just kind of extrapolate that, and we say, well, actually, everything that we feel, every symptom that we have, is a message from our intelligent body to say, oh, hello, it's trying to get our attention. And I know it seems, seems very simple, but I have to say, I think people intuitively know that. I think what happens is that people trust themselves to, to a certain degree. And I think it's the kind of thing that if a person has, has a, a frustrating day at the office and they suppress their frustration and soldier on and they come away with a with a, a, a bad head at the end of the day they kind of know that we've well, got this bad head because of you know the way I was what things that happened at, at work today um, but if that bad head then gets worse and becomes chronic and lasts a week or two weeks or three weeks people kind of switch off from that intuitive knowledge they have and they begin to they then go to their to their, their doctor and the, the, their doctor says oh right okay well you better take these pills and if it doesn't go away then come back and then have brain scans and all these sorts of things and then they don't find anything wrong and so i think that it's, it this seems to be uh, a to, yeah. sorry to interrupt you but to clarify yeah. for our american viewers and listeners bad head is welsh for headache oh yeah headache okay yeah. <laughs> okay <laughs> please continue <laughs> <laughs> so so I think so that, that's the kind of idea really that my sense is that people kind of know this but there comes a point where symptoms get maybe a little bit chronic or a little bit worse than they would expect that we slip into a mindset whereby we become very mechanistic so the body's a machine and I think we're used to this model of medicine which is you know medicine came out of an idea of looking at uh, uh, looking at uh, um, illness and injury and anything else was kind of put, sort of put, put to one side. So yeah. it was, you know, kind of ideas were built around the idea of, right, well, we have particular illnesses or injuries and we have particular treatments for those specific illnesses and injuries. So it became very linear. Um, whereas, of course, when you get into things like stress and emotion and the fact that I think what we're beginning to see now is that 
lot, you know, because we've got lots of chronic health problems, you know, so many people, even though we know more about the, our, 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 our body than ever before, we know more about, about health um, treatments, we have more health treatments than ever before, our bodies seem to be suffering more than ever before. So there's yeah. more instances of anxiety, depression, fatigue, pain, all these sorts of things. And those are the things that medicine is struggling to, 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 to deal with. And I think part of the reason is because of that mindset of illness and injury. And if it doesn't fall into that category, we don't know what it is. And of course, there's the treating symptoms. Uh, I, I'm kind of waffling a bit now, but that's the idea of if we get, if rather than, I think, when we get into that mechanistic mindset of something is happening to me, we sort of externalize something because we're into that. It's an illness. There's something happening to me or it's my genes. Um, and I think we pathologize or this, you know, it's a thing. There's a thing that's happening to me. And I think when we get in, when we shift that perspective to the idea of a symptom is a solution, it's in many instances, yes, there are times if I've got a case of flu, a, a, a pathogen has entered my system and my body is reacting, even though the symptoms I experience are arise from my, um, my system, my immune uh, system killing the, the virus. But they're also, but so that's if something is invading. There's lots of symptoms where the body is, it's just the body trying to get our attention. And that's why I use those mm -hmm. simple examples of kind of hunger and tiredness and whatnot. So I think shifting from this idea of something happening to me to it's actually a process my body is going through. My body's trying to give me feedback. It means that we can, we can look at what's going on in an entirely different way. We can begin to say, well, actually, maybe the symptom is a messenger maybe it's trying to get my attention maybe i there's something i can do so rather than reaching immediately for the pills because there's something i need to get rid of we can look at it well there's maybe there's something that i need to learn here so it's it's a it's a it, it, it's it's empowerment really because of course i would argue that our body and our, our body and our mind combined are self-healing self-correcting and they want, and if, if the environment is is right, our body and mind will will correct themselves. Um, I think a lot of the time we we get in the way with all the pills and potions mm -hmm. we take. We stop that natural healing process to take place. Yeah. Well, when you're suppressing the symptoms, so you can't really recognize them and pay attention to them. How do you get connected to that? I think that's really with if you're using medicine to to suppress the symptoms you can't pay attention to them anymore yeah. that becomes a big challenge you know it 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 makes so much sense and it also sounds like you do need to be really connected to the self and aware of what your body is doing and in the second part of the book you have this theme around knowing yourself loving your spell yourself speaking your truth and and it sounds like that's a, a, at least a part of the journey to healing that disconnectedness from the true self and beginning to heal. Is that right? And, and could you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, no, I can. I, I think that in, there's this idea of, of, of symptoms trying to tell us something. Certainly in the work that I do and the symptoms that I work with, which are the anxieties, depressions, fatigues, pains, uh, stomach and bowel complaints, um, I'm looking at it from a perspective of a body in a perpetual state of stress begins to produce some form of, of symptom. And, you know, as we talked about in the, in the last uh, episode, stress can be a variety of things and our body can be in a state of stress without us being aware of it. So I think that a chronic health challenge has a number of what I would call primary causes. So it's not the single cause, single disease the idea that lots of things go in what I would say I call our stress bucket a lot of that is our emotion and but if you have an illness if you have an, uh, an, an injury of some sort if you have a bad diet if you have you know poor sleep all of those trigger the stress response in the body and the stress response is exactly the same thing so yet a lot, a lot of my work is getting people back in touch with the physical body, back in touch with the emotional selves, the spiritual selves, because it is only when we realign the kind of the thinking brain and the body that mm -hmm. we're able to kind of pick up what's, what, what is going on. And that can be symptoms, our, our, our emotional feelings, because I think that is, that's one thing that we have as, as a Western culture 
is that even though mind and body are one, we have a kind of conscious thinking brain and an intelligent body. And I think that the two are often quite separate. And I often, in, I, I often ex have the experience of, of clients that tell me that their life is absolutely great, but they've got all these, uh, you know, this, they have this disease or, or illness. And huh. they know that, right, well, because I'm coming from this place of saying what well, the symptom is trying to tell us something. So your right. body and the intelligence within it is obviously not happy about something. Something is out of balance, and therefore the symptom. So even though your head is saying, oh, no, life's great, what we need to do is connect those so you recognize, mm -hmm. no, actually, probably life isn't great after all. But I think that this is one of the things that we have the capacity to get stuck in, in our kind of thinking brain to kind of shut the trap door to, to the rest of, the, of, of, our, of our body, and we don't pick up on that on that feedback. So getting in touch with the body is definitely is, is the first thing, and be that through, through symptoms and then our, our, our other feelings. Because my view is that everything that we feel is something that we need or ideally want to be aware of. It's not, it's not to be focusing on ourselves all, all the time, but having sufficient awareness of, of what's going on is important because you know, if we can't, then we, we don't know. It's like, you know, I've given the example of the staff so that you're walking down the road and there's stone pot, pots in your shoe. Because if you have a, a condition, a health challenge, whereby you don't, you don't feel anything in your feet, well, you're not aware of the stone that goes in your shoe. Uh, and therefore, you're not aware of the damage that's, that's being done. So yeah. being able to feel is important because that's the way our, that's what our, our, our body uses to, to give us this feedback. Yeah, yeah, so interesting. And it sounds like if you are disconnected and you have this idea, like my life is great, but it's not because your body is telling you something different. I, I can see where someone might go, yeah, well, I'm fine living in denial. But if they reconnect and heal that stuff, then they get to experience true happiness. And real joy in life not this illusion of it that they might currently have fair well i i think so yeah i mean my, my sense is that there's a deeper level again that i think that we exist on a bit of a a, a, a spectrum and i think that there's a there's a, a limited self part of us that is trying to just get by. It's trying to. It's it's kind of fearful. It's in that space of I'm not okay. Don't don't don't, don't rock the boat. And then we have this kind of expanded self, which is a flow of consciousness, which connects us to all that is. That's the spiritual kind of part of us. That bit knows that right. Well, my experience of life emerges from within me. I I kind of I am okay. Uh, so I think a lot of the time when we're in that limited self space, we are, and we believe that life directly causes how I feel. In that space, we're trying to limit the things that go wrong, and we want to, you know, kind of believe that everything is okay, and we try to control outside life because we think outside life is causing how we feel. Right. But that's a, it's a bit, it's, it, it's a myth really, because how we, how we feel is emerging from, from within us. When we can, what I look to do is nudge people up this spectrum. You know, we're constantly bouncing around and we always have times where we don't feel great. So well there's times where we do for, for, for no, no apparent reason. But my work is about trying to nudge people up this, this, this spectrum where they let go of trying to control outside events and they, they connect to that flow of consciousness that is them. And then what emerges from that is more of a sense of joy and, and, and peace of mind, which I would say is better than in that limited self space where you're looking for the next fix. So you're going shopping or this mm -hmm. or that, whatever and you're trying to just to make yourself feel better for a very short period of time. Indeed. And of course we have a culture that's, that's based around that, isn't it? Short term, short term brain chemical fix. Uh, yes. <laughs> Too much. Yes. Kyle, I think you better come back. <laughs> Would you like to come back? <laughs> I'd love to come back. Thank you. All right. Let's keep this conversation going. Thank you for joining me today. Would you like to come on the after show? Yes, please. Okay. Awesome. Well, All right. Great. I'm going to tell you a funny story on the after show. All right, viewers, if you'd like to join us for the after show, you can come with us. Head on over to twoquestions.tv. That's our URL. And that's the only place where you can find the after show. You come over there. Kyle and I are going to be over there. So 
We'll see you over there. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.